and we are live yes so i have like this little um pre thing that's supposed to count us down from 10 seconds or whatever girl we weren't doing that today it just wasn't happening <laughs> we could <laughs> We couldn't make that pop today. But hello, hello, hello. It's another Tribe Talking on a Tuesday with Miriam and my guest, Jess Solomon. Um, so, hello, darling. Why is this a thing? Do you know how many people have come on the show and done this? Oh, my Mills. Oh, really? Yes. Holly did it. Uh, D did it. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> so, yes. Um, the way we start, I mean... I think I met you at like a house party. Oh, yes. I, I, I love like that. I, met, I feel like I met you at a house party. I knew who you were. I want that for us. Yeah, but I feel like I met you at, at Cats. Yes. Was it was it like dark? Were we, out, were we outside? No, when they had that like hyped up backyard thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was the first time we had ever actually like met, met, right? So, um, and I was already following you, but then I was like, oh, she cool as shit. Like, oh, okay, this she the people, she the people. So, <laughs> so I want you, as we always do, we start the show with a, um, what we call the 30 second commercial. This is just where you tell us what you want us to know about you. Um, it could be who you are, where you're from, whatever, whatever. Um, what you want us to know about you in 30 seconds. And the floor is yours. All right. Um, my name is Jessica Solomon. I go by Jess in a lot of spaces. Sometimes I go by Jessica, though, because, you know, everybody don't get the Jess. Um, I'm from Baltimore, where I'm born and raised. And I am a facilitator, a systems thinker. Um, I love community. And I'm always thinking about ways to um, increase the impact of mission-driven groups. I'm the founder and CEO of Art and Praxis, which is a social impact firm. And in my role, I'm ensuring that um, values driven and sustainable um, and impactful work is happening. And we're producing that work to support leaders, organizations, and folks committed to social justice to really lean into their full potential and power. I'm also a cultural worker. I love stories. Um, and I've told jokes on stage on occasion. And you tell jokes on stage on occasion. There's some YouTube videos floating around. Wow. Oh, I didn't do enough digging. I didn't dig the right way. It's been kind of funny. I want to revisit that, um, I think. And <laughs> Did you say I think I'm kind of funny? <laughs> yeah. I mean, also, COVID's weird. Like, am I really about to be in these streets selling jokes? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, so glad to be here. Love that you are building this thing and that I get to be a part of it. Um, and I'm glad we were supposed to have our own show, you and me, remember? No, I'm st I still think we should. I do too. I just want to put that out there. One of the if things we I talk about is saying no. Mm. Because I recently have had to say no to create more space for things like that. So, yes, I will say saying no, I've never had a problem with it. Oh, when's the master class happening? Because, uh, <laughs> Yeah. That was yeah. It was it was actually one of those things where I had to learn more recently to like open up to saying yes, so that I could so I could experience expansion. And then I was so in that whole like no sphere that once I expanded, I didn't know how to handle it. So there's like many sides to that thing. I just want to put that out there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes <laughs> there's many sides to that thing. So you say you are a systems thinker yes what's that what mean does that mean yep that means okay if an organization or a group of people want to work with me oh just you know can you help us facilitate this meeting or this retreat one of the things i want to ask is how is this one experience gonna work towards shaping and impacting the larger mission of what you do like i'm always thinking about how is this one thing tied to larger change or some kind of, I mean, mm -hmm. policy or moving people or community towards, um, well, you know, to the next phase of where they need to be. Like, I'm always just thinking about the, the micro, how it informs the macro. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew that. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> So, this is for other people who don't know. Not, 
No, but you know, everybody, not everybody speaks the same language. Some right. you use, you, there are, people have cultivated catchy phrases for how they describe who they are and what they do. And sometimes you have to kind of break those things down. So people are like, oh, that's exactly what I was looking for. Right? Yeah. I mean, I, it's like, you know, some people can say, you know, I'm a, I'm a bus driver or I, I make, um, I'm, I knit things or I, you know, like mm-hmm. there's in, in my work, um, it's always, a, I always trip up. Because I'm trying to figure out how to translate what I do that really makes sense. I remember the most intense interview I ever had was with a group of fourth graders. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, fourth graders named my company. So <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like how do you? And I think I think everyone, every adult, particularly every business owner, should like try should make sure that they can describe what they do so that a a class of fourth graders understands it, right? Like there's a way to. So. Yeah, that's a, or kindergartners. Kindergartners, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I tell people to talk to me like I'm a kindergartner all the time. Especially if I'm working on like a grant or something, talk to me like I'm a kindergartner. Make it plain, make it plain, break it down. Break it down, all the way down. Yeah. So make, make it so that you're annoyed when you finish, like you feel like you were talking to somebody that wasn't on your level. Like talk to me that way for a little while. Cause I'm gonna get you back to where you know, you know, we're on the same plane. But also, you know, level, you might learn from that um, person that you're breaking it down to, right? So Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, just, but I need this now up front. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just, but I understand what you're saying because, I, you know, I'm in theater, right? So I tell people I'm a, I'm, I'm, in, I'm a theater practitioner and I have been for almost 20 years. And they're like, oh, my God, why didn't you do Broadway? And I was like, oh, no, I this, that's just not the type of theater I do. I do non-traditional theater. I do spontaneous theater. And they're like, is that theater? It is. <laughs> and then you have- but you know what? That's good. And it also makes, it reminds me of like, you know, when you're with your people, mm-hmm. you know what I do. I can, you know, it's, it's, it's shorthand. Yeah. But there are times when you're not and you're like, oh, I realize like I am in a different environment right now. And mm-hmm. I, it, it's healthy to be in That's different good. spaces. Um. I, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm torn between like being with my people all the time versus like being in the larger world and being with people who are, who are not my folks. So I wrestle with that. I don't. Tell me what, what side. <laughs> of- I, I pick my, I, I pick my click and I kind of roll with it. Okay. okay. You know what? But you know, I'll also say I've identified the the prototype of my people, right? So I don't have to, when I walk into a space, I don't have to d- figure out if that person that's a stranger is going to be part of my crew. Yeah. I can tell because yeah. I've yeah. already identified the prototype. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, that, and it doesn't matter what country, what continent, like. That's right. And, and sometimes like, you know, I was in therapy talking about this. Like, you know, I I always want to find my folks when I'm in a new space. Like I do. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like when I find my folks, we're able to like Voltron and really show up for each other. Mm-hmm. And that's like selfish. Like I want to do that for me. Like I want to be around my people. There's a really mm-hmm. great article, um, old, like 90s. Um, Dr. Reagan Johnson, who founded Sweet Honey in the Rock. She has an yep, article yep. that wrote about um, convening and how, you know, it feels so good to be with your people and you feel safe, but that's not really where the the big shifts happen, right? And so if you really thought that life, like you need to use time, there are times when you go out into the world and you're, you're in the mix and there are times you come back and retreat. And so I've been thinking a lot about like, okay, so, I'm with my clique. There might be times I need to be in other places. I still can find my people in those places. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and be. So that's just something I've been thinking a lot about. Yeah. And like being able to say, and I say this all the time, constantly all the time, everywhere I go, I belong, right? Like there's not a place, there's not a room I've walked into that is not a room I'm supposed to, that, you know, I'm supposed to be there. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think when you're saying go from being with your people, I think we're all, we may be talking about, 
talk speaking about the uh, same theme different ways, right? I think so. But, yeah, because for me, I'm not thinking like my group of friends. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking about my group of friends. I'm and I'm not thinking about. Um, so when I say like I can go and I know who these people are, blah 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 yeah. blah. You know, it's kind of like on every level, professionally, personally, whatever. Like, even if I go to a bar, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. You so yeah. Sam, mm -hmm. um, I have learned recently since COVID <clears throat> that um, it's not that I don't like people. Right. <laughs> it's not that I don't like people. Um, it's that I I'm an introvert one. Like, you feel me? I am an extreme introvert. Yeah. Um, and I have identified through these crises who are the ones that are the extroverts because they out here, real live right now. Um, and so, <laughs> so I have been saving myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel so like... <laughs> I know. And then the mask, I get to wear a mask. I get to, wear a mask. <laughs> I get to be, I can put on my shades and a mask. It's okay. Oh, add your headphones. I'm <laughs> going back. I'm like, I'm like, wow. This is so, like, come on. It's a gift. I mean, it's not a gift, right? Yeah. It's, it's not. It's not. It's not. This moment has allowed some of us to like, be in the world in a different way that I I did I was on the cusp of intro I'm on the cusp of introvert and extrovert but I realized I am actually more introverted than I thought I was. Oh I yeah I knew my son is an extrovert. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he be needing hugs, touches, playtime, conversation like he's and I don't mean like I mean I think that their kids need that in general. Yes. But like there are introverted kids, yes. you know, I didn't get that. I didn't get one of those. <laughs> so I be struggling. Like when I say struggle and I never want him to feel like I'm pushing him off or whatever, whatever. But it's like, it's hard. <laughs> it's like, it's like, baby. I'm just an introvert, you know, um, but he's, a, he's an amazing teacher for you. You know, he, he, he is. And yeah. he's. You're right. Because mm -hmm. we did a thing. We chased waterfalls. We, um, you should do it. You should do it. It was so necessary. We, um, <laughs> hey, Lindsay. Hey, Kelvin. Hey, Nick. Um, <laughs> we um, actually like Googled where are waterfalls and like got in a car and like drove and went and experienced like swimming holes and watering holes and um, you know, the waterfalls and he was able to talk about everything he knew more than I did about, you know, the things that I should probably know more about. <laughs> um, but it was like, I needed that. And I didn't realize I needed that. Um, and it was a, it was a good break and it's, we're not done. We still have like, there's like 20 something left on the list for us to go see. Um, but there's a lot of waterfalls. I don't know if you knew that. I know that. I know that. <laughs> Before it gets cold. I mean, you yeah. could do a whole session, like a whole um, series on like what you learned during COVID. You know, I love asking people that um, when I'm mm -hmm. when I'm with people like, hey, what have you learned or what have you discovered? You know, mm -hmm. it's amazing um, what we've been able to spend time doing, you know. You learned to skate, huh? Hey, girl. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not, you're not going to catch me on the Instagram with some reels talking about how I'm, you know, but I, <laughs> yet, I, yet, but I, it has been, um, kind of a saving grace for me and just a chance to be in my body in a new way. And also like, I, I see when I practice what happens, right? Like yeah. I see the output of me devoting time to this thing. And I also love that it's an individual sport. Again, introverts stand up, right? Like I get to Hello. Play, <laughs> okay. but I gotta focus on myself, you know? Yeah. Um, I was in, I was talking to my therapist about it and I was like, you know, I think COVID, we also found things that are novel that we wanted to do. 
But yeah. now we in it. So it's kind of like that shit ain't novel anymore, right? So I'm like, okay, skating still feels good to me, but it doesn't give me that high that it used to when I was like, oh, I can spin. Oh, I can skate backwards. Oh, I can do this. And so I, now I'm thinking about like, well, what's next? Like what else? What's new that I want to kind of, not even me, after, but like do, you know? Let me find out you're like an like a introverted adrenaline junkie. Is that what it, it's like? A I mean, <laughs> so I... Mm, I'm a little too conservative and like of a, a fraidy cat to be an adrenaline junkie, but I do like to try new things that yeah. I feel like I can like become good at or like enjoy. So yeah. I don't know what's next for me. We'll see. I was thinking about like painting or something like that. We'll see. I tried exercise. Like what exercise though? Like what? What do you like to do? Well, I I was walking consistently. Um, I I didn't like that. I, I mean, I I like to walk. I like the that I know how to walk. But like walking, <laughs> walking as like a thing. Like I'm just gonna go and like be walking. It lost its. I get it. You know, so it's kind of like that. And then I did take like an outdoor aerobics class. That that's definitely not my. Um, it was hard, and the sister who was running it, like she was super good at what she does, mm. and so like she had us like dancing and stuff. And you know, I'm like, I'm bobbing, like, how low can you go? And I didn't realize like I was getting into a squat and that it was hurting. And I was like, oh, sis, you played me. I'm done. Class over. Like. <laughs> I've been in situations like that, and I also like I, I'm like I want the teacher to be proud of me. I mean, definitely like should I need to talk about therapy, right? Oh like, my God. Really low, right? And then I have to realize, like, girl, you gonna do the best version of that for you. <laughs> so that teacher, they can't make or break you, right? right. Like, your race, boo. You yeah. are this. You are you know you are your competition, and you do what's best for you. So I I say, you know, I'm not going back. Okay, well, there's that. So, never mind. It's, it's outside. I'm not going back. First of all, the location is problematic. It's outdoors. I live in New Orleans now. It's like and muggy, right? Yeah, but, I could have died. I feel like I feel like it's reckless. As a matter of fact, um, <laughs> I mean, so many entrepreneurial endeavors have like bubbled up in this season that are a little bit reckless. I it's mean, a little reckless. I feel like it's a little reckless. And, you know, I ain't got no paperwork for this. Ain't no liability. <laughs> Getting low with the knees. <laughs> right. I'm wow. over here in a full little squat. That's right. Yeah. I'm thinking about no form. So, <laughs> don't yeah. Care. Not Let me go back into the coffee shop where I was when I saw y'all in the first place. <laughs> my, my business with this biscuit. Right. <laughs> but, I also will say my the this uh, this time, yeah. I, I, you know, this time, I've had to be more aware of like my health and mm -hmm. my body, and you know, just because one thing leads to another, one th you know. So I've been doing assisted stretching. Uh, I go and get, I go to the stretch zone, and they stretch me twice. Oh, it's a place called the stretch zone. And they stretch, when I say they be stretching me out, like, I'm like, yes, I'm more flexible. <laughs> I'm about to, <laughs> I'm not really about to do anything with it. I'm just going to, um, but I am, be <laughs> I'm just, I'm just more flexible. It's a good thing. Um, <laughs> and, um, and I feel better. And then I've also, I, and then I joined the joint, which is a chiropractic um, network. And you pay like, you can either pay like $70 a month or something for four visits a month, four adjustments a month, mm -hmm. or like pay per visit and it's like 25, 30 bucks or something like that. It's really inexpensive. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. But I do that. So I've been doing the stretching and I've been doing the, going to the chiropractor and um, really just kind of getting my body back to like where I can dance for a long period of time and not feel yes. things cracking and cricking and cupping and, you know, yes. singing along with the music. Um, <laughs> well, so awesome. I, I relate to that get back in your body thing you were saying about the skating. Yeah. I mean, that health piece is really critical and, you know, mm -hmm. I think about like work and mm -hmm. how work and stress, 
can impact our bodies. Yeah. Um, so right before COVID, I had surgery. And, you know, I had surgery on March 10th. And the world shut down March 11th. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to be on bed rest. I'll be back in three weeks. Like, I didn't pack up. I didn't, you know, because mm-hmm. in my mind. And, and then all of a sudden, nobody was at work, right? Like, and mm-hmm. it's funny. Like, I feel, I feel like a lot of folks had a runway to wrap their minds around what was happening. Mm-hmm. And I really did a lot of, like, reimagining my life. Um, and at the time I didn't think I would be doing that at all. I mean, also like I transitioned out of my full-time work at a foundation and like, um, was also navigating other health challenges. Give your angry face emoji there. So like, stress, right? Yeah, I can, Im- I know. Mm-hmm. You know. And as we think about stress and work, you know, this past year, uh, or year and a half, all of a sudden black women were you know, seen as experts on diversity and inclusion or black people on diversity and inclusion, all these things when, yeah, just, you know, like all of a sudden everybody wanted to hire um, a black or BIPOC consultant to do a thing. And like, yeah, which was good for me. Which was good, but it for me, it also made me get really, really clear about what I would and would not do and what exactly. work was mine and what work was not mine. Um, and I agree. Yeah, I learned a lot. Um, and I'm also, yeah, I'm just really clear about what is not my work and what's your work. And as I think about systems thinking, right? Like, is this little cute retreat where y'all, you know, holding hands and crying? Is this actually going to change the way you you pursue the mission or not? Nah? Because if mm-hmm. not, like, I'm out. Like, that's not my work, you know? Yeah. For me, it was a lot of, um, I was getting a lot of interest from Black folks because people know I, I, I only really yeah. serve. I only really have black clients really. Mm-hmm. So um, <clears throat> black and people of color, um, <clears throat> um, black and people of color, but predominantly black um, and women. So I was getting a lot of sisters who were like, look, now's the time for me to blow up. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, which is why I started being like, yes, saying yes <clears throat> more. Remember I told you I was an, I'm a no girl. Yes. So I was like, yes, because I'm like, yeah, this is the, th- yeah, it is time for you to blow up. And then I realized. Mm, what? I don't have it. I'm not, I'm, I am a, I'm a good business person when the business is designed the way that I designed it. I'm not a good business person when I'm just, when it's just, when it's just a whole bunch of work, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And not for nothing. I left DC because I was, tired of running running in the wheel uh and i think yeah that's been a thing for a lot of us like we we realize like oh i'm running the i'm running the wheel like i actually mm-hmm. don't have to do that or i'm going to choose not to do that right now um, well i wanted to be an employee i was you know? i was out here sending out resumes like hire me and they were like ain't you been running a business for like 12 years mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. They were like, you gonna come in here and take direction? And I was like, I will. Allow me to be your secretary, sis. What's up? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, agree. I think, I think. Well, for me, and I, I, I hear this for you. Like, there are times in your life where there's a, it's a call and response. Like, some things yeah. I'm going to be an employee with a board that I'm accountable to, and mm-hmm. like, you know, staff. And then there's some seasons where I'm not. I'm going to be the person they bring in. Yeah, to support a project. Um, I know for me, I was like, I can't go back into another institution because I'm still dealing with trauma from being in one. So what I'm going to do is um, revisit my practice and Mm -hmm. and commit to being serious about it. Right. Like Mm -hmm. it's not just a a stopgap. Like it's actually something I want to pour into, which is scary AF. I mean, also entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. So I commend you. For like doing it for so long, it is. It is like every day you are talking yourself off a ledge and like being an old hype woman. Because I know I am. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, it's like relationships. Like yes, part my part like partners, romantic relationships, even relationships with my son. Um, a lot of times, there's like this in this world, in the the world of like working for myself. Um, I feel like I do a disservice to those relationships because I got to work. Child, like, like, like I, I, I like legitimately have to do it. Like I like there's no there's no cushion of 
whatever. There's no uh, assistant, this, this, that, and a third. Like, it's my house. I manage it. Yeah. I got to pay for it. Yeah. And, um, and even though, even with dating and things, and I've dated some really good guys and, you know, some, some strong provider types, but they ain't, we ain't married. So we ain't in that stitch. We ain't in that boat yet. <laughs> We're not, you know, so, um, so I find what I'm craving now, even though I love my work, I love my work. I love my people. I love my clients. I love the stuff that they're doing, but I'm finding that I'm not interested enough in the business side of it. Um, as I used to be, because I'm craving, you know, a relationship. I'm craving more time with my kid. I'm craving, you know, like I went to the grill for a week after my, my grandmother, my grandma, yeah. My grandmother passed and so I was like, I'm out. Mm -hmm. I need, I need, I need time. I've gone through too many grief situations where I didn't take the time to grieve. Yeah. Right. And this was a heavy, this one was a heavy blow. Yeah. So I was like, I'm done. I'm going for a week. Oh my God. The grill? The resort I was on, I can't speak about the whole of Negril because I ain't barely left the resort. The resort I was on <laughs> was, I pray you have a whole show on black reparation. Oh, I, I don't know if I could do that. We could might mention it Well, over a couple, uh, maybe we can do like a special segment, maybe, <laughs> but I, I got to be in the right, I got to be in the right frame of mind because that's a conversation that get, I, it gets heated, you know. I mean, it's a lot of places you can go with that conversation. I'll say yeah. that we, we should talk about some strategies that we yeah. can do. <laughs> reparations because I know I I have definitely tapped into some reparations um, oh. avenues but anyway what but yes, in the grill, you have to go it's called Sunset at the Palms it's oh. yes it's called Sunset at the Palms and there are these um, treehouse suites and it's in like a garden sanctuary with all these like hummingbirds and it's so beautiful. And they've got this private beach alcove and it's all inclusive for your drinks and your food. And they've got music and like, you know, perfect. And they only have 80 rooms, 80 suites. Wow. And because of the COVID, it was only half capacity. So there was like 60 people on the entire resort. It was a dream. <laughs> I'm gonna look that up as soon as we're done. <laughs> I I wanna I hear you when you talk about wanting stability and the mm -hmm. work of entrepreneurship and how the, it, it is not a nine to five. I know, mm -hmm. and and I wonder, I wonder what it could look like for the meantime for you to create an experience for yourself. You're able to get those things, right? Like you can still be with your partner and just, you know, like, you know, my partner and I, we, we, you know, we got plans and we talk about things, but I also was very clear, like I'm an entrepreneur and that's what this means. Right. And like, um, mm -hmm. down for that. And, you know, she said, yeah. And I'm like, great. And sometimes I have to think about like, okay, am I just, am I leaning on this entrepreneurship, um, hat right now or can i put this down so i can really show up for my partner and my family you know and sometimes i need to do that and then sometimes i'm like you know what that can wait and i also learned during I COVID, everything's not urgent oh nothing yeah the, the, what uh, one of my clients they say all the time urgency is a system of, of white supremacy and we ain't got to honor it um that but i say this i used to i mean i also had to recognize i had commitment issues well see <laughs> For a real long time, and I was using entrepreneurship. Um, entrepreneurship. That's. I was leaning into that thing. Like when I say lean in, I'm talking like I really can't. I really don't. I can't believe you sitting here judging me because I got to work and da, da da. I was all of that. I was all. I was toxic with a T. If we using it in that way, you know, like I was bad. And but you know, I'm not that way no more. Now I'm like, dang. Yeah. You know how many big, brawly, handsome, nice men did I say no to? If y'all in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was scary yeah. and then you know what happened is i fell in love mm -hmm. and i was really i was willing to pick up move again do all kinds of stuff like i was i was with it with it um and then i look heart broke <laughs> we should have like a little i need music i need like a violin i need like i gotta do better at the production value of this joint right here you know um <laughs> but you know now i'm like oh 
I'm not heartbroken enough that I'm not excited for like the next thing that's coming. Right, and you know what you want. Yes, oh, that's the production. That's it. <laughs> I'm yes. Okay. I'm okay. <laughs> also, only children stand up. I'm feeling that. Right. <laughs> Also sitting sitting on the other side of the door listening to the whole conversation. I, know. I, knew, I knew it. I was like, he's listening. <laughs> I know. I love it. He's like, I got you, boo. Yes. No, I need a man. And this, this is not look, I'm not finna be one. My son is my king. We're not doing that. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I'm with you. Right. We're not doing that. Not. I appreciate it. Not today. Not never. Not never. Not never. I'm a, I mean, I correct people when they say, oh, King, just, I'm like, no, he's a prince, prince. No, he's a, no, right. Mm -mm. He's a child and should not have those kinds of responsibilities. Anyway. Hey, Kaylee. Um, there's a lot of stuff. We've got people in the chat. This oh, is, I, I, like the, I like, if y'all have questions, what y'all talking about? Like, do y'all, how y'all feel? Y'all feeling us on what we're talking about? I, I get all, I'm saying, hey, do y'all, hey, nice to see you. I miss you too. Yes, a violin girl. We need violin. We need a we need a full concerto. Isn't that what it's called? <laughs> concerto. I let me tell you how I've been saying art and proxies. Ooh. <clears throat> so praxis is basically when you apply theory to something. And it's funny how people would trip that up. Um, I'm fully aware of what the definition is. I'm telling, I'm just telling you, you, I've been messing up the oh yeah, y'all. That's what art, that's what praxis is. I, I love I love that. Keep it up. It humbles me. It's like, yep, praxis. Well, I have been consistently <laughs> consistent. saying it wrong. Being consistent is important. So you know, keep well, it. Yeah. Oh, on, I found out on, on one show. I had a friend. She, we've been friends three years. Okay. Lindsay says thanks for the definition. We've been th friends three years. I've been saying her name wrong for three years. Oh. I didn't find out till we got on the show. I'm like, why you ain't tell me? Why did she tell you? Right, we've been in, we've been in, we've been on stages together. You and uh, <laughs> I dated, I dated a man who said, and maybe I don't know if this is a regional thing, but he said salmon instead of salmon, and I, I didn't tell him because I was just, I felt, I felt. Like no, I feel like that's one of them things you. <laughs> might. You might got to tap somebody. You know, you know, you you can do it discreetly. You might just say, in other company. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. You can say salmon. Um, anyway. You really can't though, because that's just not how it's pronounced. But you, you can. <laughs> I was like, okay. I just let it go. I shouldn't have, but you know, just somebody I can listen to. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you tell me, if you tell me to be quiet, you better have a plan that's gonna work. <laughs> I gotta trust that you have a plan. That yeah, that's a good point. That's you a good better, point. but also like go work your nine to five or you know do your yeah. thing. And like I don't have any hair here. I don't know why I'm sitting here. Why don't you do like a date thing on this show? Like I don't. Know I go on dates on no, this well, show. Well, I don't know what that means. I mean, like I, I just like this is a platform that could be really interesting because you're interesting and there are single people in our work. I don't know. I don't know what it is yet, but I just want to plant that seed. I think some dating element could happen with you in this round. That frightened me. No. I'm going to tell you why. Because I would hate to get have somebody on here lying, dating with Miriam. No, Lindsay. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I think so. <laughs> What what's my role in this in in this well, vision? Oh, mm, that's a good question. We got to figure out a format, but I think there should be some kind of like I don't know like speed up? dating on talking. Hey, hey! Oh! Maybe it's not just you, right? Like you can have a, a, a crew of some of your single dope friends, and y'all just like I don't know. Think about it. This feels like I think I'm like really the only single one in my crew. Oh, well, you could also like recruit. I just want to put that out there. That maybe I need more single girlfriends. I know, I know, I know a few dope ass single sisters who 
would be hilarious and y'all have a good time on this show. So I don't know what it looks like yet. Mm -hmm. but I'm not the no, I'm not. I'm not the only single. Okay. Right, there's, like, there's like four of us. All right. But they would never do this. Mm. And you know them. And if I were to say tell you their names, you would say no, they would never. I don't know who you <laughs> like, maybe. I mean, COVID has shown us a lot of shit that we <laughs> Oh, I don't know, sis. Right. I, right. I had someone tell me that I, you know, I'm almost six feet tall, right? Mm. I love that. And um this lady, you are ready, already meeting someone. Oh <gasps> and it's Say it, read it. What did they say? Yeah. You are ready meeting someone ready. Like I'm ready to meet someone. Is that what you mean, Lindsay? I am ready to meet someone and interest and I meet interesting people all the time. Break it down for me, Lindsay. I, I can't get through it. Lindsay is like one of my good, 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 good friends. And I feel like she's low-key calling me out. And I don't oh, necessarily right. know if I want to read it in a way that it's probably written. So I think it's like a disconnect. She said, yeah, she's calling me out. Um <laughs> I just also want to say I just learned where the comments button was, so now I'm seeing everybody's comments. Thank you. Oh my bad. I should have probably told you that in the beginning. Oh no, this is um this is great, and I do think you should think about a show. Maybe we'll do like a special series. I mean, I could. Yeah, come on. I just I got so much free time. Why no? <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, I actually do. Let me not lie. I actually do. I oh, over. The, let me be very clear. I, one of the things that I have done over the last couple of years, when I left DC in 2018, I got to New Orleans March 2019. When I started working again, I was like 10 to three. That's oh, it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 10 to three. Those are my hours. Now I have gone outside of that because remember I told you this unexpected expansion, right? I've gone outside of that, but not too crazy. Like I still do, like I take myself out on Thursday nights, um, hotel and dinner, um, which has been a good safe way for me to kind of just like have that staycation feel mm -hmm. um, and eat new food. Mm -hmm. What new food that. have you had? Have you had any new food? Um, good food? Have I had, oh, have I had any good food? I found um, this really great, I'm not a vegan, I'm a flexitarian, right? So, you know, I, I hang out in the vegan area, but I have I have seen a chicken wing I couldn't walk away from, okay? <laughs> but anyway, I found a vegan restaurant in like Columbia that was really good. I had this amazing bowl recently. Um, I also want to shout out a, a black owned um, ice cream shop called Kaju Creamery in Baltimore. And I had this amazing mango lassi Oh, I saw you posted that. I had to post it because I was like, it was so good. Um, I'm here for it. I, I like now I eat at home a lot and I try to, when I go out to have dinner or a meal, I try to make it worth my while. Like I want to eat something different or try new things. Um, but yeah. Ooh, shout out to Kay and Brenda. I'm just looking yeah. at you. Um, I'm late. Anyway. No, it's okay. Brenda had said you she said you were amazing. I knew that she was gonna she had she I was excited that she um I love that lady. Yeah. Ain't she ain't she something? So okay. she something? Hey yeah. She she's too busy to come on my show, but you know, whatever. Um, yeah, and I just want to gush a little bit because we don't get these chances enough. Um mm -hmm. her radio program, uh the light social justice. Something, something, something. I remember the title. Brenda put it in the title. I put it in the chat, please. Was like a syllabus for anybody in DC who was looking to do socially engaged art or like social mm -hmm. art with social justice, with a social justice lens. And just mm -hmm. like here's like a mass, amazing group of people she talked to. And mm -hmm. I'm excited for her work as a filmmaker. And yeah, she's got another project coming out right now. Um, oh. Yeah, it's dope. So anyway, uh, B Hayes Films, B is in boy, H A Y is in yellow, E is in elephant, S is in Sam Films on your on um, Instagram. Um, follow the follow this fine spring chicken. Um, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> um, oh, 
Let's play a game. I want to ask you some questions. Oh, no, 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 no. You ready? Da, no, 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 no. I still am waiting for someone to give me theme music and change music. I'm manifesting it. It's going to happen. Yeah, you should have a theme song. I know. And it should be dope. Trap talking has like a thing. Like you feel it, right? It's like a yeah. We had a thing for Tribe Fest. Which, come on. You're first but of all. Not... And I missed that. I, that's another thing I want to do. I would love to. I actually pitched to do Tribe Fest as a tour. Um, similar to Black Artist on the Move. Um, but it being a training tour. Detroit, and, Atlanta, Oakland, New Orleans. Man, I mean, Miami. You know, but I also want to go to these little cities that where people don't know how to advocate for themselves. You know, like the little pocket towns. Tuscaloosa. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh. Oakaloosa. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yes. 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 Hey. Yeah. I want to go to the. You know, I want to go to the stick. Um. And tell people like you're allowed to cuss and fuss. I mean, with this, like for instance, with Hurricane Ida, I'm gonna get to the questions. But like, I was talking to a Lyft driver, and she was saying how her um, her her friend or somebody, their whole house got messed up. You know, forty thousand dollars worth of damage, right? And um, the insurance company offered them seven thousand dollars, and I was like, they didn't have to say yes. Mm. You know, like the the governor said, every insurance company has to pay out. Um, it needs to be fair, whatever, whatever. He like made it a law or a rule or whatever. And um, for lack of for my chocolate martini, not knowing my language right now. Um, but he um, so it's a thing. And I was like, they didn't have to say yes. They you're, you can negotiate. You can write them back and say this isn't enough. You saw the damage. Da 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 da. And she was like, no, because then they won't get anything. And that is like a very common um, mentality, you know, in these, you know what I'm trying to say. And so I, I'm, I'm interested in more in amplifying the voices of those communities through themselves, not me just going to collect their stories, but them also sharing them and being confident and emboldened enough to do it. Yeah. Um, and then to fight, mm -hmm. like to teach them policy and teach them how to write policy and teach them how to read and understand policy and who they need to be cussing out. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that's been a challenge in Baltimore. It's not Ida by any means. Yeah, no, no. You have like people being kind of burnt out and just worn down that they don't even recognize the power and autonomy they have. And that can be, yeah. that can be used to make change. Um, so I feel you. And there's a place for your work. Like my neighbor doesn't have a back door. Like there's like literally just not one on the house. It's just a wall. And I was like, what would happen if there was like a fire in the front of your house? Right. Right. And the it says the law says if the house is under a certain square footage or something that um, they, they don't have to have more than one exit. But they're getting away with it. The actual house is a duplex. Yeah. So the actual square footage, they should have, they should, they need multiple. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because they're renting it out as two separate sections, they're claiming it to be two different residences. But the, the house, and I was like, no. <laughs> See, you, you might have to help your neighbor. I know. You don't have, who has time? I know, but. <laughs> But she's an old lady who needs a fucking back door. All right, here's my first so, question. So you need to help. Yeah, let's ask the question. My mother went to a whole soapbox about like <laughs> the old the old look. Don't play with the seniors around. Like, yeah, I know. Okay, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> so as like as people who are builders and connectors and organizers, like what I've also learned during COVID is like, you know, I can do all of that stuff, but like, what does it look like in my backyard? What does it look like in my family? And if I ain't organizing those folks, then what am I doing? And that is a hard pill to swallow when you are good at doing that shit in other spaces that are not necessarily intimate, you know? And yeah, yeah that's been my work over the last few, over the last year, really. So anyway, ask the question. 
I'm no, right. I, look, we'll talk about this at another time. Ask me, remind me to talk to you about Poplar Grove. Ooh! Call it out. Poplar Grove stole land from my family, the state of, North, the state of uh, South Carolina and North Carolina, and the Geechee Gullah Commission. We want our shit back. I'm ready. We will talk about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just want to put that out there. We want our shit back. Um, and I'm coming to get it. Yes, you are. Um, with if I get permission from my auntie, because she ain't say I could do it yet. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God, try to get cussed out. <laughs> That's the only person you need permission from. <laughs> I get permission from my if she tell me I can wild out, I'm wilding out. All right. Um, if you can go back in time to your fi- this, these questions. Here we, go. Here we go. And I'm also in my glass. I just <laughs> Okay. I'm ready. All right. If you can go back in time to your 15-year-old self, what advice would you give them? Your mm-hmm. 15-year-old self. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I didn't ask a lot of questions um, and I wasn't actively curious because I felt like I couldn't be. So like, I remember I would just watch people like and figure them out and then figure out how I needed to show up. Um, and I, I didn't allow myself, you know, there's a, I didn't allow myself to be a curious kid, mm-hmm. which is like really sad, you know? Um, and for many reasons, I didn't do that, but I would, I would give myself permission to ask questions. I mean, mm-hmm. I asked questions that were like tied to, you know, like school, but I didn't really push. I didn't really, yeah, I didn't really, um, I didn't really ask a lot of questions of mm-hmm. um, the adults around me. And I would, I would allow myself to be more curious and be like, you know, it's okay. And then I'm a kid, you know? Um, I also was working when I was 15. Like, I snuck and got a work workers permit. So I've been working since I was 15, which is, like, mm-hmm. also another thing I should bring up in therapy. But um. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I didn't sneak. Shout out to my mom for saying, play a sport to get a job. Hey! <laughs> I did not play the sport. I got a job. Oh, come on! I thought one of us, you know, was able to, like... I was well, I was scooping ice cream at Mayberry's. <laughs> no, because like everybody, I was like, I'm not good at sports. Yeah, Josiah, I saw that. I'm not good at sports. <laughs> so, he came in and took the gum. All right. Um. So you would say, you would tell yourself to ask more questions. I love it. I feel like it's so. I I love that you. If you didn't do it then, you're totally doing it now. So. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I have a picture of my, I'm not 15, I'm a baby, but I have a picture of myself on my desk. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm really committed to honoring my girl child now in a way that I have never been. I'm like, yeah, girl, I got to do this for your ass. Like, yes. So, anyway. I would also like to take this time to say, since my aunt is done here and I know my mother is probably watching as well, um, there are no baby pictures of Miriam. We're still trying to figure out if I was adopted. We've had this conversation multiple times. Stop playing with me. Somebody had to take a picture of me as a child. <laughs> Thank you. There's too many of us and too many pictures of all of y'all. So I'm put that out there. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who I am. Um, I'm dead serious though. We it's like an ongoing joke of how there's no baby pictures for me. And every time I see somebody post these cute little baby pictures, I'm like, oh. Oh. That's my trauma. That, um, okay, oh. family. All right, family. Okay, family. That's literally my trauma. That's it. <laughs> it could be so much worse, I think. All right. Who do you trust the most and why? I trust my partner and my best friend because they both teach me, like, even still a lot about vulnerability. And, like, every time I'm nervous about, like, showing another layer of who I am, like they don't flinch, you know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I would say my mama, but like, that's my mama, right? It don't, but mm-hmm. like, these are people who chose to kick it with me, who chose yeah. to be on the journey with me. And so, um, yeah, I just, I just keep pulling back a layer and they're like, okay, cool. All right. Well, you know, and I just keep, um, and uh, yeah, that's what I trust. 
I love that. And they'll also tell me if I'm like looking crazy or, you know, my slip is showing, you know, like things like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're going to be really honest with you, you know? They're not letting you be set up. No. And there's a lot of that out here. A lot of people. It is, you know, I, who, somebody said something. Was it in the last call? I, I can't remember. But I was like, what's something someone did nice for you? And she was like, yeah, somebody told me I had tissue on my shoe. And I was like, that's clutch. They held you down. So that I'm, means so much. I'm working on a um, creative project. And the main character is like that type of person. And I wrote it in the treatment. I was like, she's somebody who's going to tuck your tag back in your shirt, no matter who you are, you know? Yeah. Like, I yeah. love that. I love those people. If you are those people, stay those people. Yes, you love me. I'm not going to stop until you show me a picture. Those <laughs> are those people. <laughs> stop playing with me. All right. Um, who's... Mm -mm. Would you rather live a week in the past or the future? Future. Yeah, that was like super easy for me. Why? Um, I just have no desire to like rehash the past, even if it was something that was amazing. Like I just, mm -hmm. nothing about that sounds exciting to me. Like I, you know, I would love, not love, but I would prefer to, to be in the future. Um, mm -hmm. how, as scary as it may be, I just feel like, um, I feel like who I am today is like a culmination of all the shit that happened in the past. And so mm -hmm. I would, Curious to see who I am, you know, in the future. I feel like I would, <clears throat> I would, I would say the past because mm. it's only a week. Like if it, if I was like going into the future and I was going to stay in the future, okay. Then I would, you know, but like going to the future, knowing what's going to happen in the future, and then coming back. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd probably trip out. So the <laughs> past, there are people that like I want to meet that I didn't get to meet, you know, things like that. Yeah. But like. Like my grandmother, you know, stuff like that. But like, well, you say it like that. I mean, <laughs> I don't know about seeing how I'm gonna be, and then I might be changing stuff. I know. I think I, I might go to the future and then be pissed, and then I'll just be ornery <laughs> in the present until we get to that moment. Because I'm gonna be like, I told y'all, I told y'all, you know. And so, y'all ain't fix nothing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm already ornery. So I don't know. Actually, that's a good point. Do you think you're ornery? I do. And I'm actually working on it because it doesn't hurt me. You know, people people are people. Yeah. And I can do what I, what I do. I think you described me as like a, I don't know, it wasn't a rabble rouser, but something like that. Oh, a calm, fi a calm yeah. fire starter. Dang, sometimes I want to be a, a river. You know what I'm saying? Like, But I think that's the calm. I guess I've received that. I received My that. point was that I've seen you operate. I've seen you exist in this yeah. duality of like this peaceful kind of here, read this, understand this very like making things digestible for people type of way. And then I've also seen you or heard you enraged. I and for that more than you have any idea. Yeah. And so there's this, so those things exist. And I think that that's what makes that, that's one of the reasons why I'm it's so interested in you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I received yeah. that. Um, anyway. It's true. I didn't make it up. I don't offer gratuitous anything, just so we know. When y'all hear me complimenting people, I mean that shit. That's why you my folks. You one of my people. And I would fix your tag, fam. Thank you. I, I know. I would fix your tag, fam. Um, I got another. Oh, I got another question. I got yeah. another. I don't know if I want to do another question or if I want to do the one word sentences, because we've been killing these one word sentences. And I feel like you would. Well, that's whatever you feel called to do. Well, let's do it. But I also want to know about this dark comedy that you're writing off of you about. Oh, yes, can I? Can I just? Mm. <laughs> okay, it okay. is a. Is it a? Is it a short film? Is it a series? Is it an exhibition? Is it a book? Yes, it is all those things. And it is. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> That delivery is your delivery for now. Like, it is how you are going to explain this from here on out. Yes, thank you. <laughs> it is inspired by, loosely based on my life and, and also, 
Yeah, just some of my experiences. I mean, essentially the story is about a black woman who was on a meteoric rise in her corporate job and has used retail therapy to avoid dealing with some shit. Yeah. And, still, and she's a, she's an art collector. Mm-hmm. Still, um, her most recent acquisition won't let her um, avoid dealing with some things. And so it's a ride. I don't want to give a bunch, a lot away, but I'm super excited. Um, and I am excited to incorporate art into the project and also use some dark supernatural elements to really bring to life um, the inner, inner life of a, of a Black woman. Do you know Lisa Pingram? I do. You should let her publish it. I will write that down and follow up. <laughs> Thank you. You know that's what she's doing now. You know, I want to do a um, I want to do a stage reading in a gallery, and we can talk about that offline. But I would love to talk to you about it in particular, and I will reach out to Lisa and see what, what's cracking. We can make that happen. It's been really fun working on this project because I don't owe it. I don't owe it to anybody. Like it's just me playing around. So it's it's great. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel about the Jukes and Blue Bayou. Two yeah. projects that are nowhere near done that I've been working on for the last four years. Ooh. I mean, it's time. It's it time is. to give birth. It's time. It's time to give birth. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. It's time. It's time. I think, you know, this is, if there is no, because uh, when are we going to get this much quiet? When are we going to get this much quiet, right? Um, I have no idea. Yeah. I'm looking for... I need like a, you know, that, that, that moment, like I thought it was going to be in the grill. I thought I was going to get there and it was going to be so beautiful that I was just going to want to sit and write. And then it was like, no, it's too beautiful. I just want to sit and indulge. So I need like that, like hybrid, that middle ground space where it's like, I can sit and I can work, but I feel just kind of like enchanted by everything around me. Have you done those hideaways? You've seen them. Is it like in a, uh, the woods? You're in like a trailer, but it's a nice trailer or something like that. Is that it? You know what I'm talking about. I do. And I don't like the way you said it. <laughs> well, clearly I have my own bias because I'm like, ooh, I, a, a, a black girl from a certain environment. I'm not trying to be in the woods by myself. Like that doesn't feel safe. <laughs> and that's why I'm like, maybe, you know, but no. I'm, I just and I love it. I, we stayed in a tree house in Hull, Alabama, wow. on a, in the middle of like an acre of nothing but woods. There was a big old lake behind us. It was like super scary because we got there at night and it was like off the road. But it was so fun. Nothing about that sounds fun to me. Like I, that's that Baltimore. I'm from the trap. Like I will be. I need a siren every so often, right? Like I need a light. I need. I would, I would. Um. My friend Lindsay said, Miriam took me to the woods. It was fun. <laughs> I do take people to the woods. Well, you know what? I would go with you. <laughs> she oh. said she was scared. I'm a, I'm a glamper. So like, I enjoy yeah. like the, I'll pick a really nice, a really nice, but often very secluded, Oh well, yeah. you know, but I also carry guns. So. Well, that's a whole other series. <laughs> so. You talk about that because I got guns and machetes, so ain't nothing coming up. We we not going out, you know. What I'm yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I also during COVID, another thing I learned, I got a license to carry. I mean, have you started shooting? I have not, and it's funny. I have all the things in order to do that, but I, you know, just haven't made that final step. So you got to shoot, babe. Maybe I know. I know. We'll talk. We'll talk. I need, I need help. I need, I need a hand to hold. Yeah, you gotta shoot. If nothing else, because it's otherwise it's a wasted tool. I'm saying this to everybody. Like I think. Yes, say. I shot my first. I think I shot my first gun when I was like, I was young. I was really young, and I had no. I don't, and I don't think like I wasn't supposed to be shooting. My cousins were shooting, and I shot a gun. Um, but I was like, oh. You know, and then they told me, like, you can't do this. This isn't a thing. Like, you're not going to just be out here shooting. But then when I got, I was going to, oh, Christy, are you still here? Tell me if you're still here, because this is a story about grandpa. Um, 
when I was on my way to Hampton, uh, he asked me if I wanted a 22. He was gonna he was gonna give me a gun. <laughs> and I was like, yes. And then he was like, you can't have no gun. Like <laughs> I was so excited about it. And my first gun was a 22. Did you know, do you know, did you, were you there when he did that? When he was joking with me, he, he had a, a 22 and it had like a pearl handle on it. My grandma had a pearl handle gun. <laughs> I wanted that thing bad. He was like, no, he did give me a screw. He gave me a screw. You learn something new every day, friend. Had no idea. And that I was out here in these streets. Like I'm a country girl, man. I, 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 I put on this American standard English for y'all, but like, I'm a stick girl. That, that's another reason why I had to leave DC. I had to, I needed to, I needed to come back to something that felt country. Yeah. I can't wait for your dating show. I can't wait. There's going to be some question about like, when we go to the, the night, I can't my, my auntie say word on the street. He gave that gun to everyone. <laughs> I'm telling you. And now my my son's father bought me a um a 22 gauge shotgun pump with the handle. Disturbing <laughs> to me. I'm like he said it's disturbing. I'm so pretty when I hold it. I believe but, it. I But you know what it is? I'm being here um by myself. Um and I'm a I can fight. I'll fight you too. But Sometimes you don't want to have to go through all that. I would rather just you hear one once, once they hear that thing go click, most yeah. of the time they'll they'll leave before you even get to shoot it. <clears throat> um, but there are also like wild animals and stuff here that like, you know, and it's so much to me, it's so it's I think there should be control on guns. Like they just did this thing where they were trying to um make it so that if you were over 21, you could carry concealed without a permit. And I was like, nah. No, we can't do <laughs> No. No, that's such a terrible idea. I was so glad it didn't pass. But I was just like, who even thought to put that on the table? Because it made it too, it made it so far. <laughs> this, is, um, this is a whole other episode. <laughs> But what I'll say is that, you know, it's better to, I think as a, as a, as a black woman, single, whatever, it's better to be prepared than not. I'll leave it at that. And that's why I pursued it. But I know, um, you know, I, <laughs> I had to take a nap after I went to the range. Like I slept the rest of the day because I was just like, this is a lot. I'm also an empath, which like added to, you know, my feelings. But, um, you know, I just... One of my therapists told me I was an empath and I told her, I don't think I'm an empath. I think I'm just highly sensitive. Mm. And she was like, you know, that actually could be true. She was like, you, um, and I was like, hmm, I don't know if I should pay you anymore, but <laughs> because that, you know, we, I think we, now I will say I, I have a visceral response to people when they're hurt or when they're angry. like, I feel the things people feel. Right. But I also am capable of turning it off. And I feel like that yeah. is what keeps me from being an empath because I don't think empaths can turn it off. Hmm. I don't know, but I, I hear that. I'm like, hmm, I need to think about that because- And so I when I looked at, yeah, so I Googled it and they were like, you can be empathic, you can be, you can be an empath, you can be empathic, or you can be highly sensitive. Mm -hmm. And the definitions are so similar. Yeah. And so like when I started hearing so many people say, I'm an empath, I'm a, and I was like, I wonder if we are all, at, you know, if we're just kind of lumping that one thing in, you know, um, and I, from what I understand, like most people who are empaths, like actual empaths end up like committing suicide and having like all kinds of like really, because they can't disconnect, they can't not feel. So I don't have those. I don't, I've never had a, su uh, like a suicidal inclination or, I mean, I've done drugs, but I mean, those are, you know, just cause I started doing drugs early and it was fun. Um, I didn't really have like a, yeah. I wish I had a better story, a better reason for why I was doing that, but that was just cause it was fun. That's another episode. We can <laughs> <laughs> I was hanging around a bunch of rich white kids, you know, they had the best stuff. Their kids, their parents had good cabinets. Um, <laughs> Where is your son? Is he in the hallway? What is Josiah? He Make sure he's. No, he oh, went back. He's sneaking snacks in the kitchen. Okay. okay. 
Um, I can tell he's not by the door because the door has a crack in it. If he was by the door, he would close it all the way and I would just have to see his feet. No, I was just, Miss uh, Miss Jess was just asking where you were. Okay, He said he was in the living room. Okay, great. Okay. And you putting the gum back. Thank you. Bye. Exactly, Lindsay. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs, kids. Kids are, uh, yeah. Besides, you know not to do drugs, right? Oh my God. Right. You know not to touch guns, right? Yeah. I just wanted to make sure people knew that I had a child in the house. I know I said I had guns. He's very aware. Uh -huh. He said yes. He didn't say huh. <laughs> Everybody chill. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do one more sentence and that's going to take us out. Okay. Because I need to feed the child that we've just been that's talking to. Too, I don't want to be responsible for not. You know, yes. Feed him at a decent hour. Lindsay, but guns are not Southern. Guns are actually, I would say guns are Northern. Y'all got mad guns up in the North. I, I would say guns are American. Yes. Facts. Because when I was in, like, I remember being in the UK. Mm -hmm. And we went to London. Mm -hmm. And I saw police and stuff like that, but I didn't see any guns until I got to the American embassy. I was in Scotland. No, and we worked with the police. I was in grad school and it was a consultant. Yeah. Nobody carried guns. No, we went to the, I, I performed, we did a, a data collection in the sex offenders prison. Whoa. It, that's a, again, another show. Yeah, that's another but, show. <laughs> but when I, well, I was like, and I was at the same time working um, in the, the jail on Eager Street in Baltimore. Whoa. So, right. So the difference was absurd. I mean, they had picture windows and garden and like it was actually about like rehabilitating folks. Yeah. And I'm like, yep, this is crazy. Because in Baltimore, you couldn't walk in there with a cup with a bottle of water. I had to ask permission to bring in like paper like oh. notebooks and got turned down yeah a I lot know. <laughs> i know we gotta go it's folks in baltimore that have been looking at the uk as examples of like how to really um do reform they're 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 i was not expecting i mean to the point where they had us in there now mind you i'm my group is all women right right and not everybody went. Those who had the type of trauma where they could not be in their space did not come. You know, we were very. I don't even walk down Eager Street because I can hear people yelling at me walking down the street. So. Yeah. Oh, no. At Eager Street, I was by myself. Oh, my God. It was either me and a musician or me by myself. But those. But I had such a. I had outside of the leadership, like the lieutenant warden and stuff. I had a really good experience. The guys took to the work we did um um turn your hustle into a turn your hustle into a uh um entrepreneurship yeah. so like the things that they you know that they were in there for trying to figure out like what the skill sets were to turn them into viable position viable jobs once they got home because they all only had like six months left on their sentences wow. um and it they only let us come one time like we did one seat one series and then it was like and eh, you are you doing the most because they turned down one of the guys wanted to learn about trust funds and so I requested to be able to, tr to bring in a book about trust funds and they told me no. And I was like, what is it about a trust fund mm -hmm. that they can't know? Anyway, that's Baltimore. That's yeah, Baltimore. Yeah. So, but in the UK, I walked in there with a suitcase. Um, you know, it was like five of us. Yeah. They didn't pat, they barely pat us down. They didn't open the suitcase. Um, we get in there and we're like, in a room, the guys are sitting in their seats. They cleared a stage area. No COs in the room. The chaplain was the only person in the room. And I was like, how is this safe? But it was totally mm -hmm. <laughs> fine. Mm -hmm. It's a different way of thinking and, and being. It's totally different. And like seeing people as human. Don't get me started. I know. I get me started. It's the last few minutes. Don't get me started. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. To not get started. So. I know you over here. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. I know. Does anybody have any questions for us before I do our before we go into our one word sentence? Since y'all, bingo, building wealth. Yes, building wealth, Lindsay. I know a mess. And thank y'all for being here. You know we've been kind oh. of not linear, and I like it that way. But thank yeah. You.
Shania. I think we've 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 said the things we needed to say. Yeah. We came and did what we came to do, you know? Mm-hmm. I really just wanted to connect. Remember I told you I was just I, I wanted to reconnect. I want to reconnect with all these uh, the list of folks that are coming on this show. Um I wasn't sure who was going to respond. I think I just sent out kind of like this message to people that I really love that are on my mailing list and people I've worked with and da da da. And um the response, I mean, we've got every Tuesday covered through February. Congratulations. It also speaks to who you are, right? Um, so I receive that. Receive that. And nice. I'm, I'm coming to your town in November. So I will follow up so we can hang out. I love that y'all are starting to come in now because uh, who's coming? Holly's coming. I'm about to say, we're going to go. We're going to, oh, there's this little rooftop spot that I've been wanting to try. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make plans. Okay. One word sentence. The way I mean, one word story. The way this goes is I say a word, you say a word, and we we continue going back and forth until we've created a story. Okay. And then we will find a soft, we'll find an ending for it. Yeah. Organically. Can you close the door for me, sweet love? All right. Uh, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Because I'm just gonna say the. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> the girl was full you say full mm-hmm. of feelings that yes i keep giving you the big like the girl was full of feelings that inspired a. <laughs> you should have started. <laughs> oh, you're not telling the story, boy. A movement. I feel like that's the. St- Wait, the girl was full of feelings. Feelings that started a movement. That inspired a movement. We can we can go a little bit if you want. We I can do a little. I feel like okay, a movement. No, let's do it again. Let's okay. start it. Let's do it. You start. Okay. I like that. That was a y'all think that was a cohesive. That was a cohesive story. A girl. Um, sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> no. What am I doing? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, the <laughs> majestic river tumultuously. Moves the Sharp. rocks. Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> he's he's hyper aware of the of time, and so I know I respect that. I, I, so he's like, uh, you do shows for sixty minutes. It's been sixty minutes, uh, <laughs> so. We are going to take it out. That was that was a cohesive enough for me, says Brandon. Thank you, B Doug. What's up, B Doug? Good to see you. Um, <laughs> um, I love y'all. This has been another tribe talking on a Tuesday with Miriam and my guest Jess Solomon. You can find her at where? Um, Instagram, Jess Solo Amazing. My company is also at Art and Praxis, P R A X I S dot C O. Um, or just Solomon.org. Anything that you want us to look for in the coming months that you um, might. Art and Praxis is, is doing an online giveaway right now. We are offering up an amazing book called The Black Butterfly, which looks at um, apartheid and redlining and um, black cities across the country, starting mm-hmm. with Baltimore. And we're giving away the book and um, ticket a ticket to the virtual talk on Friday. So you can sign up. We announced the winner tomorrow. And that's at, uh, at Art and Praxis on Instagram. At Art and Praxis. Can I sign up or is that cheating? Yes, please. No, do it. Yay. Okay. All right. Another Trap Talking on a Tuesday with Miriam and Jess. And uh, we'll be posting soon who our next guest is. And you want to say goodnight? You want to take us out? Tell everybody good night. Say thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Bye. And see you next week. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> see ya. See ya.